Labour really had neutralised the Conservatives' traditional advantages on immigration, on taxation and on defence. That's quite something. I don't think it's that people think Labour is now wholly wonderful on any of these things, but they think that Labour will play safe if the Conservatives have messed them up. So tell us, what message do voters want to hear from politicians and is anybody delivering it? Uh, well, firstly, no, they don't think um, it's being delivered. I was just looking at some opinion figures just out in their poll for today's Observer, and they asked how likely it was that uh, Rishi Sunak would meet the different objectives he set. And the one that voters think is least likely to be achieved is stopping the votes. Very few voters think that will happen. Um, and voters have also noticed that, of course, immigration has gone up quite sharply in recent years, partly Ukraine, partly Hong Kong, but nevertheless, it's gone up. So um, I'm not sure either of the main parties at the moment can really say voters are completely on their side. It used to be a plus for the Conservatives, like defence, where I say NHS was a plus for Labour. I don't think immigration is any longer a plus for the Conservatives. I think it's a, a no-score draw at the moment. And I find that so interesting, this idea of areas where Labour used to be very dominant and where the Conservatives used to be. Because I think traditionally we've, we've thought that Labour were very trusted on public services and spending, and the Tories were trusted on the economy and defence. So just lay out for us, where are those areas now, or is it all up in the air? Um, well, Labour are now ahead on, on most things, depending on which poll you look at. The numbers do vary slightly from pollster to pollster. But, I mean, Labour really had neutralised the Conservatives' traditional advantages on immigration, on taxation and on defence. That's quite something. I don't think it's that people think Labour is now wholly wonderful on any of these things, but they think that Labour will play safe if the Conservatives have messed them up. I mean, you, do, you look at taxation, for example, uh, we have the highest peacetime uh, tax rates uh, that, that's, that, of any of our lives um, under a Conservative government. Now, of course, Labour like to say, that, it, and indeed Keir Starmer, I think, said in the last 24 hours, he wants to cut taxes for working people, which is a fairly specific pledge. I'm not sure whether he can keep that. Um, and one recent poll I looked at found that people expected taxes to go up after the election. Whoever wins it, they don't see a difference between the two parties. Well, look, Mid Bedfordshire is a is a test of what people think, and with the usual caveats that it's a by election, so it's not the same as a general election, and people may not vote in the same way they would in a future bigger poll. But you mentioned that polling in the Observer that shows that the Tory vote share in that seat has collapsed. What chance do you think Labour or the Liberal Democrats have, have of taking a seat which at the moment has a fairly substantial Conservative majority? My advice to anybody who's thinking of placing a bet on the result <laughs> of the Bedfordshire by-election is keep your money in your pocket because frankly any one of four candidates might win. Conservative, Labour, Liberal Democrats, and a very strong local independent. Um, and it may, may be one of those seats, you occasionally get them in Scotland, where the winning candidate wins on about 25% sort of, of the vote, because all the Scottish parties are within a couple of hundred votes of each other. It could be like that in Bedfordshire. The Tories might win, they might come forth. Um, so um, I really, really would not like to call it. That's interesting. So you still think there is a chance that the Conservatives could retain that seat? Look, the Conservative vote will drop very sharply. Mm. It might drop pretty well as much as it has in, in other recent by-elections. The difference is that in every other recent by-election the Conservatives have lost, um, one anti-Conservative party mopped up pretty well all the anti-Tory vote. And what might happen in Bedfordshire is not that the Tories do stunningly well, but the anti-Tory vote is evenly spread. So it, it, it's not inconceivable the Tories could get at 25, 26, 27% of the vote, a dreadful vote share, and still come out on top. Well, I mean, it's interesting you say that, Peter. I mean, we do have this new uh, poll in today's Observer newspaper done by Servation, mm. and they're putting Labour on 29%, the Conservatives on 29%, and the other candidates, the, uh, the Liberal Democrat on 22%, uh, Reform uh, uh, on 7%, and the Independent on 6%. Now... Labour are saying that that points actually to this being a neck and neck race with the Tories and therefore implying that people who are fed up with the Conservatives should come to them. Isn't there some logic in that argument? Well, um, there's extreme logic in Labour um, saying this. And what Labour's really saying is, look, 
Um, we're uh, clearly ahead of the Liberal Democrats. If you want to beat the Tories, you have to vote Labour. The Labour want to get a band where can go. If Labour get a band where, or indeed the Liberal Democrats, if any uh, either of them got the band where can going, they would win. Clearly, you know, the Tories on twenty nine percent. That's pretty dreadful um, for, for them. So the question is, will this poll, and if there are other polls, will they say the same thing? Can Labour get the momentum going? If they can, it's all over. Labour will Labour will win. Um, but if they can't get the momentum going, then you could get a very, very messy result, and which is, is very close, and who knows who would win. I mean, it sounds like, Peter, it would have made more sense for either the Liberal Democrats or the Labour Party to step aside for each other in this particular case. Uh, uh, yes, it would. But if you go to Labour people, uh, they say, uh, look, we came clearly um, second last time. Look how well we did um, in Selby. We're the natural challengers. And the Lib Dems say, well, look, this is the kind of seat where there's a ceiling to the votes any Labour candidates can get, you know, 30, 35%. And in normal times, that would not be enough to win. Um, so, you know, in, in, in a rational anti Tory world, there would be a deal, even if it was done by tossing a coin, um, <laughs> you, you, just to get agreement that one of them fights it harder than the other doesn't. But we're not in that position. And I, I don't expect anybody within either party who suggested tossing a coin would last very long in the inner sanctums of their strategists. Yeah, Peter Kellner, thank you for joining us and taking us through uh, those trends and new polls this morning.